Dzień dobry, chciałbym Państwa bardzo serdecznie powitać. Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you. We've got little time, so let's start the panel on the economic reconstruction, digitalization, a chance for Poland. We are hosting today Katarzyna Śledziewska of the Delap Center, University of Warsaw. Hello, Mr. Marek Belka, the former prime minister and the president of the National Bank of Poland and European Parliament member, uh, MP Jan Grabiec, the civil, civic platform. Uh, he works on the Committee for Digitalization, Mrs. Magda Dziewguć, Google uh, Polska. So I would, let's start uh, uh, with Magda Dziewguć. I can see some slides uh, on in your telephone. So. Probably after the debate, we will be able to show these slides uh, to you. So if you could tell us what's in your slides, then we will feel as if we are on the radio, not on the TV. A good afternoon. Everybody knows that you can count on technologies. And today, technology is very easily accessible. So slides, slides cannot be displayed, but I have them on my smartphone. I've got very uh, outstanding panelists, so I will provide a short framework for our discussion. Firstly, where nowadays are there the reserves to reconstruct the economy? And what kind of a role is perceived for the digitalization? I think that some of these reserves due to the fact that nowadays digitalization has accelerated, so they are more available than we could expect. So I will start uh, discussing the technology that has become more important during the pandemic. So I would like to ask the audience, what's the percentage of women in Poland who are, who are out of work, who do not work? 40. Someone else has another idea, 30. Okay, not to make it any longer. So when we're looking, uh, looking at, uh, at uh, women at the productive, uh, at the working age, 34% of women do not work. So it's uh, uh, below the EU average. And uh, the studies, the research indicates that during the pandemic, uh, quite a big group of women left the labor market. Why am I saying this? Because thanks to the digital tools, Nowadays, uh, it's much easier for the women to get back to the labor market. Uh, they can work as, uh, as owners of small businesses. We can see uh, a lot of mothers who do not who, who do not work, but they set up online stores. They offer some services uh, and products. So this is the first hidden reserves reserve which can be unblocked very easily with the uh, technological tools. Another question, how many pensioners in Poland work in percent? 20 percent, 30, 15. Only 15 Polish pensioners work. And this is much uh, below the average in the well-developed economies. So this is another reserve that should be unblocked. And what happened during COVID? We had 25% growth in using uh, internet tools uh, in this group. So pensioners uh, learned how to do shopping, uh, how to make doctor's appointment via internet. So this is another reserve that can be unblocked. So for instance, we can invite them to offer the services via website. Uh, my dream is that we will have the digital world where uh, lady pensioners uh, from uh, from uh, from small uh, towns will be selling uh, uh, tulip bulbs to Chinese entrepreneurs via internet. And the third reserve uh, is the Polish food producers. So we can see a dynamic and systematic growth of export. The next uh, export record uh, was reached last year. And Polish farmers uh, are becoming food uh, producers, and high quality of such 
produce very often um, Echo, uh, echo products uh, can raise higher price, prices, but they are not very good at selling their produce uh, online. So it's not about uh, selling the produce at low price to wholesalers. Uh, we would like them to develop their own uh, internet stores, marketplaces, to sell the produce uh, at higher prices uh, to much uh, wealthier, to, to, to more, to, to wealthier uh, consumers. So we've got some 200 million consumers you can reach uh, uh, within 24 hours, thanks to if, if we have good logistics. So it's a good uh, offer uh, for uh, food producers. We will be also talking uh, during this panel about uh, the, tra the uh, about the chain of uh, purchase. So uh, the dependence. Uh, of the Chinese producer has, has blocked many European producers. So these chains will be redefined in the coming months. They will be shortened. We have very good infrastructure. We have well-developed industry. And this is an opportunity to, uh, to start operating in these chains and to offer components to numerous European manufacturers uh, and to uh, acquire the, uh, the, the Chinese uh, orders fragments. And the Young Unicorns is the next reserve. Uh, so we know that these young unicorn uniforms provide uh, support. Uh, they 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 facilitate service outsourcing for Western corporations, and at the same time, uh, we have more graduates of uh, technological, IT, and uh, mathematical studies. So it's more, much more than in other European countries. So. You can learn business processes. You can uh, work uh, according to the global scale. And uh, it will result in numerous uh, startups and interesting projects. And it's up to us whether we will provide opportunities to the young unicorns to make sure that the experiments and innovations uh, are of interest to Polish consumers. Now we hear that it's easier for them to cooperate with foreign uh, partners, companies. But I'm sure that there is a space uh, of uh, collaboration with the, the public and private sector. Thank you very much. Uh, lots of interesting statements. So it's worth asking a question. Yeah, the mic is on. So let me ask the question how to release the reserves, considering the fact that if there is an area which is not in the polarization uh, focus that we all see, if there is a commission where both sides of the political uh, conflict agree is the digitalization uh, committee. So as a rule, different political uh, parties agree upon certain measures. However, the uh, digitalization processes uh, go quite slowly. I think that uh, regardless of the uh, that it happens regardless of the government, no matter which uh, party uh, the uh, the minister for digitalization is uh, mentioned, typically it's uh, uh, these are other ministers who are uh, enumerated after the prime minister. Generally speaking, for digitalization, for innovation, it is better if uh, these issues are far from the uh, party politics. So it's quite uh, positive that the Ministry for Digitalization can implement processes which take years and don't uh, 
take place according to the rhythm of subsequent uh, elections. When uh, the uh, ministry operates at the prime minister, there are more uh, challenges that uh, uh, are more urgent than the long-term ones. So the recent decisions to move the uh, competences of the Ministry of Digitalization do not uh, promote it. Uh, so in practice, it can be seen it doesn't work like that. We have to uh, start uh, on uh, building the ICT infrastructure or providing database for innovation. The fact that uh, digitalization uh, motorways are being built, the access to the broadbands that make it available for private entrepreneurs to build uh, their networks based on these broadbands and uh, to offer services to the end users. The few years delay results in the fact that we um, are behind other member states, although we can be proud on how open the polls uh, are to innovation. Nearly 19 million polls use uh, electronic banking services, and over 8 million use only electronic banking without using the uh, computer or not going to the uh, bank outlet, it shows that if uh, some applications or solutions are designed for users, it works. Administration prefers tested and safer solutions. Rarely are they the innovation leaders. So uh, we all know how administration functions on different levels, but uh, at new ICT projects, it is important to secure the ICT department, uh, legal department, and finance. The voice of the end user for, for whom the interface matters is not really heard. We can make a system which is correct from the ICT point of view. It complies with the Polish regulations, which is not easy uh, because uh, the administrative processes are not so easily uh, digitalized. Sometimes we have to change the regulations to automatize them. and. It needs to be fit the financial frameworks, and we uh, release a product that is not meant for people. If uh, uh, bank specialists uh, had different uh, spe uh, apps, one to check uh, your uh, balance, uh, uh, the fourth one to take uh, to, the second to take the loan, and the fourth one for insurance, it would be a natural barrier to the for the access to these services. And this is how administration works. Everything is dispersed. Uh, the uh, gradual acceleration in the pandemics was possible because solutions from other sectors were implemented. That's the future, taking the advantage of the innovation of private companies and taking the proven solutions from the administration and attempt to uh, integrate everything to use identity confirmation in one place for different areas without creating additional logins, passwords, and so on. Me as an MP also have uh, the problem with that. As we know, um, our ministers tend to have problems with their email boxes as well. Thank you. Magda Jevgut from Google outlined the reserves. So the question that I'd like to ask to the former prime minister is not uh, how much you can earn on it, but what, what uh, happens to Poland if we don't use these reserves? You often visit Brussels and can see how the digital transformation, what the digital transformation looks like in other countries. What happens if we are at a standstill? Uh, uh, we can run or trot, but what happens to us if we don't take the opportunity? Well, it's good that you changed the nature of your question. What does uh, digitalization offer? This is not the right question. It has already happened. It's around us. And the pandemic uh, 
accelerated uh, the speed uh, in a shocking way, at least for my generation. The question is, what will happen to us, to Poland, if we don't uh, get on the express train? This is uh, really a high-speed train. The answer to the question is uh, simple, marginalization. Let me take uh, the few minutes to tell you what it looks like from the EU perspective, from the perspective of uh, Brussels or the European Parliament. First and foremost, the pandemic uh, contributed to the invention of the Reconstruction Fund, but it was invented or developed in a more skillful way than the traditional framework. The priorities uh, were outlined uh, quite precisely. Green Deal, digitalization, 20% of the resources are suppo supposed to be devoted to projects related to digitalization of the economy. Uh, if or when the money gets to us, this is one issue, but secondly, second, the second aspect is to spend them wisely. And this is a big challenge for all governments. Uh, Italy, which was somewhere uh, behind uh, in Europe, are a perfect example because uh, they have had a perfect leader for, since, for a number of years from uh, central banking. That's your colleague, right? Yeah. Italy is uh, a great example to show that uh, the 200-something billion euro should be spent on excellent projects. And apart from being a highly diversified and modern economy, are uh, a society which is uh, neglected and behind, and there's a lot to do. What did Europe say? Establish the priority and said 20% should go for uh, should go to innovation. There are also numerous uh, initiatives, legislative initiatives. Uh, that you uh, have mentioned. You mentioned the Polish food producers. There is a very interesting program from uh, field to fork. This is a project which is like a motorway for a modern Polish uh, food producer to uh, launch it to the European market. You also mentioned shortening of the supply chains. Europe is not passive in this respect. We uh, are fighting for the introduction of the rule, implementation of the rule, that all trade contracts should contain chapters on due diligence related to human rights, employee rights, and observing the rules of environmental protection. It means that for the potential subcontractors, the uh, requirements are getting higher. But you can decide whether you want to come back with your production to your own country or sell it all over Europe. We also mentioned uh, uh, the uh, coal um, border tax. It's called carbon, carbon border adjustment mechanism because if it was uh, called uh, tax, then it would be vetoed immediately by Poland and by others who pollute the air. But it's going to foster the return to some uh, deliveries to Europe. 
where the sustainability standards and environmental protection standards, as well as uh, combating the climate change, uh, uh, imposes higher standards. Finally, I want to say that digitalization is a global issue. It's like it is fighting for Europe's survival as an economic and trade superpower, having such uh, competitors as China and the USA. Today, the war is not no longer a military war, but this is a technological war. And Europe has no opportunity to build an army which will be as strong as the Chinese or American ones, but we have some opportunities and we should uh, take advantage of it. Katarzyna Śladziewska, there are many topics that uh, I could ask uh, about. Perhaps we'll have uh, time to do it. Recently, you were uh, uh, conducting research on the banking sector and issued a very interesting book from uh, about the business and uh, economy. Let me refer to the same question as previously. That was the question to Professor Belka, what would happen if we are delayed? What uh, happens if we run too fast uh, and uh, thoughtlessly? So the question is how to build the economy in such a way that it's uh, trustworthy for us. Let me start saying that datafication is not in the title, but uh, digital economy, how new technologies change the world. I would like to encourage everybody to download the book. I put a lot of effort to outline the um, frameworks of digital uh, transformation processes to show how the market changes, uh, how our consumption and production changes along with global economy, and how the revolution uh, takes place in the area of products and services. Definitely, it's important for us to understand that uh, digitalization has become an opportunity for the economic progress, but it's possible only when we, when we don't take the perspective of new digital tools and services, but the perspective of uh, organizational and pro procedural change, uh, changing the processes inside companies, uh, markets, public administration, or uh, the whole global economy. In order for it to happen, we need uh, the infrastructure, but uh, the pivotal aspect for the whole transformation is that it's knowledge-based. If we don't start changing our educational system in Poland or the whole approach of the employers and employees, or introduce the common lifelong learning and uh, gaining new competences will be left behind. Uh, it will go uh, spontaneously because the borders change, because the procedures change. And if the knowledge is not absorbed by companies, by the economy, and they don't know where to look for it and how to use it, unfortunately, will be flooded by products, services, or new business models. That This is also important to point out that it's not only about the ICT specialists, but about having human capital which has advanced digital competences. This is, uh, this is the key. Uh, we should not worry that these processes would go too fast, but uh, we can lose sleep over some processes of uh, the 
digitalization if our human capital is not ready for the process. Thank you very much. Let's get back to this side of the stage. And I would like to refer to what you're writing in your book. You have said that you would, you, your dream is that people who are retired, uh, they should be able to sell some products or services. You are also mentioning that Polish companies could operate thanks to their internet uh, platforms to increase their export. But how to avoid risks uh, relating to this platformization? We can see that the platformization is entering uh, next uh, uh, sectors of economy. It's great that we can provide new jobs also to other people, but doesn't it lead us to a scenario where in the future we will not have the jobs we have right now, well, it's not a good example because it's pandemic. We go to work. We have families. Sometimes uh, we work during weekends, uh, but sometimes uh, the situations are very different. So the question is whether the global uh, companies uh, are implementing new solutions and uh, won't uh, smaller companies be taken over by the large And Thank you for the question. It's a good opportunity to uh, see what's uh, what's the nature of these large technological companies. This, this revolution uh, we are facing is a change that can be compared to the change, the change caused by availability of electricity. So uh, people had electricity, but they couldn't use it. So it's the same situation with the, uh, for example, cloud technology. Cloud technology is a redefining technology, and it's only valuable if users can use it, or developers of the platforms can use it. So on the one hand, we've got this open digital society uh, who are operating based on some Western values. And Polish innovators, as Brainy, today they can offer some educational services to, I think, 400 million students throughout the world. Booksy is another platform developed based on cloud solutions, but Stefan Batore and his engineers provided the real value. So we have to be realistic. It's not the cloud itself or technologies to develop software are valuable. Competences you have mentioned are of the top value, and this is an opportunity. So we have to build competence in developing and using. We should develop some interoperational rules, which will allow us to exchange the electronic con uh, contents. So I think this is something we should focus on. We've got very gifted uh, graduates uh, of technological studies. It's not only about Poland. It's, uh, it's the situation in the Central Eastern Europe. Uh, UiPath has just debuted on the New York Stock Exchange. So it's a company established by several engineers from, from Europe. And it was a very interesting debut on the New York Stock Exchange. So we shouldn't focus only on Polish users. We should produce for users in the United States because the United States has a huge market worth a lot of money. And I can see that there are lots of Polish startups that first enter American market or Indian market, where they have access to, a, to, 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 to many users. It's easier to grow in such countries, easier than uh, in the Polish or European market. 
due to, for example, lower regulation related ba uh, barriers. So we have to identify uh, opportunities. It's the so-called future-proof economy. So we have to focus on such development of economy that uh, will provide us with a solid base for the next decade or 15 years. So we need the competences. They are critical. And I would like to observe that the next group of seven-year-olds uh, went to school, so they carry 10 kilos of paper in their rucksacks, and this, this is an abstraction to them. They do not understand uh, why uh, they should carry these uh, 10 kilograms. They could just view it on two web pages. So we can talk about dreams, about technological power in Poland, but this is an organic work we have to do. So we need to change a lot. And we need politicians for this purpose, not only politicians. I have a question. Which model we should use to make sure that the state simplifies, uh, changes, uh, digitalize the infrastructure to digitalize um, institutions or companies, whether the state should do it with, uh, with, uh, with private sector? You have mentioned it, that the that administration uh, likes uh, the songs they know. So what to do to make sure the public-private partnership uh, is not is starts wor working? We have been asking these questions for years. Well, I don't want to start the discussion on the public-private partnership because this is a completely different story, and I'm afraid that we don't have time for this. I think that uh, the more area, the more innovative the specific area is, the more partners uh, uh, will be necessary, specialist partners to uh, assess the values, to assess uh, uh, risks associated. So it's a win-win situation for both sectors. Of course, there are some fields where the state has to take the lead. Well, there was a project seven or eight year ago, years ago uh, concerning e-school books. Unfortunately, this project uh, was stopped. Uh, and that is why we do not have e-school e books, which would be much uh, more efficient in uh, teaching. So our education remained at the same level as it used to be eight years ago. And when the pandemic uh, started, uh, you know, the, 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 the education system, the health care system uh, have collapsed. So everybody, uh, every teacher, every school, every business that provide uh, school software uh, had to do a lot of work. It would be OK if these efforts took uh, a couple of months. But now, two years have passed, and this uh, digital jump has not occurred in the Polish school. Uh, a matter of uh, regulations is another matter. It really in inhibits uh, development companies' approach us. And uh, they say that it's hard to uh, to pay even taxes. Uh, uh, it's it's hard to receive a reimbursement of uh, VAT tax uh, officials. Uh, for, for example, tax officials say that uh, the advertisements uh, that are online advertisements have to be printed, have to be provided to the tax office in the paper version. So it's not enough that such documents are uh, e-documents. So uh, these are obstacles that really discourage entrepreneurs. And that is why they are looking for different methods of operations to somehow cope with this 19th century tax uh, administration. So we've got a lot of delays. So we have to have more trust to entrepreneurs. 
entrepreneurs. And uh, the administration have to understand that uh, they are supported, that the, the earning is pay, earnings are paid by the entrepreneurs, not the other way around. Administration is to serve uh, entrepreneurs and uh, Customers have to be satisfied. If they are dissatisfied, they will uh, set up their startup companies uh, in the United States, and it would be a waste. You used to, be, you used to be the prime minister. Okay, I wanted to address this. The issue of the public-private partnership in Poland, it doesn't work. This type of partnership because uh, of the reason you have mentioned. Instead instead of three Ps, uh, we've got four PVPs. The, the, the fourth P is the prosecutor's office. So quality of the civil service is of top importance. If the quality is really poor, then there are there is no chance that we've got a good working uh, public-private partnership. And there is another problem. It's specific uh, culture of avoiding risks. I have to say that my daughter uh, works in this uh, sector, and her colleagues and herself uh, are ve were very frightened when the government decided to spend uh, se some several millions to support startups because they decided it meant that startups uh, affected by this cooperation would simply collapse. Why? If an official, if an official makes a mistake, let's say it's okay, you can cope with this. But secondly, uh, secondly, uh, in the second instance uh, of the risk, uh, you can uh, you can face prosecutor's charges. And sometimes you need 10 risks to have a unicorn developed. I would like, there are outstanding uh, experts here, both male and female experts. So I would like to use this opportunity and continue this discussion. We are saying that in the Polish education system, there is uh, no, no capability of uh, teaching children how to cooperate. So when uh, they are taught remotely, uh, Will this situation become even worse? Can the technology be developed to make sure that uh, the students will be able to talk just like we are talking right now? Yes, we are talking about different things. We are not interrupting one another. Can you do it on internet? I think no, because we need each other. We need to experience the real uh, relations. Very soon, uh, virtual intelligence uh, solutions uh, will be available. So the artificial intelligence, especially at work, both in blue collar work and white collar work. So artificial intelligence will exclude us from many tasks and we will be only uh, needed to uh, do the tasks that require the physical presence. So on the one hand, virtual intelligence will complement us and vice versa, but there is one precondition. We have to understand the artificial intelligence. How can we modify it? Where are the threats? Where are opportunities? How to use it in business, in education, in developing public policies? If we don't have such knowledge, we will lose also in education. So we need the relations, and the relations will stay. I would like to share a reflection with you. I think that the artificial, uh, artificial intelligence was harmed by being called artificial, because when people hear the word artificial, they become stressed. It's like, in, in, it's like personification of something that is an algorithm. Artificial intelligence is just advanced analytics, analytics but the, the, the terminology 
uh, has, uh, has, mm, has really weakened it. Uh, I am. I don't like that we are talking about one artificial intelligence because it sounds like it's one algorithm that will resolve all problems of this world. In each problem, in, in each challenge, there is there are several solutions. So let's get back to the question of Mr. Belka. We are a company where remote work is, has always been a standard. So coming to the office and working in the office was an option to our employees and we work in teams, uh, multi-purpose teams, very often multinational teams. So remote work uh, was uh, the priority in our company. What have we learned during the pandemic? Uh, when we heard that the offices were going to be closed, uh, uh, everybody thought it was fake news, and uh, well, when we then we discovered that we had to work from home, and when we are uh, we are isolated, it's harder for us to be creative. Uh, so the tools will mainly support hybrid uh, work to share information faster, to share data, to analyze the data and draw conclusions, but nothing will replace face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, delivering lectures and at the same time I was looking at Allegro service. So I would like to ask everyone uh, for a conclusion. So we were talking about different interesting aspects, but we are talking about economic recovery and digitalization as an opportunity for Poland. I am convinced uh, when I am looking at the position of Polish entrepreneurs 30 years ago, they they were starting from zero. Now we are in the historical moment. We have all the necessary component, fantastic labor force, very good infra infrastructure, very attractive uh, structure of cost uh, of, uh, in, of production. We've got very good logistics uh, base. What we are missing uh, are uh, technological competences, but we have uh, demonstrated that we can learn very quickly and can benefit from the opportunities. I haven't interrupted you, Professor Belka. You should appreciate this. When we are talking about digital competences and, uh, and education, what we have observed within the past few years is really we, it, it's really quite bitter. The prime minister often mentions innovation and digital competences, but on the other hand, the changes uh, in the sector of education show uh, that uh, there are more faculty missing for theology, religion-related uh, jobs than uh, for IT jobs. Uh, the sciences, the scientists are lagging uh, behind when we're looking at the number of lessons of uh, IT in nurseries or elementary schools. There were projects to teach nursery uh, children or secondary school um, students. Uh, there were plans to teach them uh, how, to, how to code. So if we do not uh, develop or build such a system, and this is definitely the task for the state, we have to change the priorities. Information, we will receive the information from digital platforms just like today. But to be able to understand this information, to combine and interpret this information, we need to uh, interpersonal contacts. Otherwise, we will have more and more information and we will become more and more stupid. To process this information, we need the system of education, uh, which will teach students, students how to think critically. We need the system that will support creativity. So we will need some more cognitive competences we will have to develop them and we should also it's we should also support the social emotional competences we should be brave we should know our values 
to cope in this new digitalized world. It's very important that we understand that the system of education is changing its role. Teachers also should rather become mentors than ex cathedra tutors. So this is the conclusion. I'm sure you, the audience will be thinking about uh, this subject. So Katarzyna Śledziewska, Magda Dziewgoć, Marek, uh, Belka and Jan Grawitz were our guests. Thank you very much for taking part in this panel. So we've got 11 second, seconds left, so time for one question. But uh, it has to be a question, not a statement. I can give you my mic. Uh, I have been vaccinated. 11 second question coming. Too late. I haven't interrupted you. Question to, to, to Mark. I would like to say to Magda that thank you very much for starting Google Sites. Thank you, and it really works. I did my website in 30 minutes before. It was a long-lasting process. Jan Grabiec, thank you for Business Golf PL. I know that you have worked on this. Last Saturday, between 5.30 and 6.30, I started up a business. So. One hour for a website, half an hour company set up, EU funding is more and more accessible. So thank you, Prime Minister, thank you that it's possible and that you can do it via a website and it's not a very difficult process. And question to all of you, because I deal with different businesses, but also I, uh, I deal with uh, education. Do you have any idea how to help, not how the government should help, but I rather look at cooperation of the business and, and the think tank you have just established on the stage, how to supply good educational tools for the millions of people at the different ages who study, study all the time they learn it in the in the, in the airplane they learning all the time so we are using different platforms microsoft teams google provides very good tools but can these uh, tools be integrated can they communicate among one another And can it be combined with the ac actions taken by the Ministry for Digitalization? I think it's a question for you. The mic is switched on. Tools are becoming simpler. You have all noticed it before uh, when you were to save contacts in your smartphones. It took about an hour. Now it's done by itself. It's critical that these tools can syn synchronize uh, one another because now the users will not uh, want to do it themselves. But there is this competitive uh, advantage, and it's about the content. So we have to teach how to develop contents. I mentioned this pensioner who should sell tulip bulbs abroad. If we look uh, when you can watch the films, how to take care of uh, plants, uh, uh, TikTok, uh, YouTube, because the tools would come to them and will come, uh, they w will encourage their existence if they create content. Photos, editing, different languages to offer the content, the availability of different formats. This is something that uh, our education does not offer. And uh, the third sector has uh, a lot to show and to teach how to create content, how to develop new 
programs. As previously mentioned by the Prime Minister, there will be a lot of EU funds for such initiatives to support. Thank you very much. We are finishing because if we don't leave the stage now, we'll never come back. Thank you very much. It's not always easy to recognize. It may look like this, or like this. It may be a burden, but it is a responsibility that we embrace nonetheless. But if it means this for one person, and this for someone else, maybe it ultimately means being there for one another. It isn't handed to us, 